you yeah. have to do that when you say it. And I, I, I like to I like to know and understand my own materials. Okay. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this into one lovely, delicious jello-like blob. And then we'll let it cool just a little bit. We're gonna be looking for two major indicators. One is gonna be, it's gonna form like an eggshell finish, which means if you take like a hard boiled egg and you roll it on the counter, those little cracks that you get, it'll also always form a hole somewhere. Gold is very dense and when it's really pure, it kind of sucks in on itself. Sometimes it's more broad and shallow, sometimes it's narrow and deep, but they'll all have it. Now, there's no reason to think that your gold supplier has not given you exactly what they should have. I just feel like understanding your materials is so important to understanding what it's going to do, why it's going to do it, how it's going to do it, that I like to show people this. Can you send me this video? Mm-hmm. I've got a nice big fat number two tip and you notice I'm not circling I'm not doing any of this nonsense okay. just keep it steady on there um, that heats it up as fast as possible and there's nothing more happy and magical than melting gold in the whole world and suddenly we're all inking Off and we'll just let it cool a little bit and I'll show you the signs that we're looking for. Okay. Because it won't form the hole or the eggshell finish while it's still hot and liquid. It has to cool off a little bit. And we will have to stop again. The only thing that's showing on top of there is a little bit of charcoal, which is you know, it'll just burn away. It's not going to affect it at all. I usually only use borax if I'm remelting scraps with my nice brandy new gold that's nice and clean and pristine, so there's really no need to. I mean, it wouldn't hurt it, but I don't think it's necessary. And why do you use charcoal again to alloy your gold? Well, charcoal won't interfere with the gold at all. It'll just gradually burn away, which is why it's such a nice substance uh, to use. They've been using this since the beginning of time, and it still works really well. Okay, so I'm going to turn the torch off. Let's let it cool just a little bit. Mm. Isn't it the prettiest thing ever? Really? And watch, as it starts to cool, you're gonna to start to see those little cracky looking things happening. You can see it starting to happen right there. I think that's our hole right on top there. You see how that little spot has kind of sucked in? Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to take a chopstick and flip it over because sometimes it's on the underside, sometimes it's on the sides. Extreme close-up. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So this is why I, this is why I dropped the chopstick on the floor, mm -hmm. just to make sure you're paying attention. 
Now, you, the thing of it is, it will light the, the chopstick on fire when you poke it with this. It's not going to hurt anything. I usually just keep the water there because it's, it tends to distract people if you have like a flaming baton, but it's not really going to hurt anything. So you see all those cute little cracks? Mm -hmm. and I think that's our hole right there, that little depression, but let's flip it over anyway. Take a look. Isn't that just the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? Mm-hmm. Because the thing with the hole is, it'll form somewhere. Like this one is relatively broad and shallow. Sometimes they're very narrow and deep. Sometimes they're on the side, the top, the bottom. So just make sure that next time you, you're checking for this, you're not expecting it to look you know, exactly like this one. As long as you see one somewhere, you're in good shape. All right, so I don't pop it in the water or anything because for me, there's no reason to take the temperature down. I'm gonna go ahead, we'll get it hot and liquidy again. I'll let you hold it. <clears throat> So you're going to get it back to the point where it's a hot and wiggling. Uh, first, we'll add our silver. We'll heat it a little bit more, and we'll add our copper. Um, I really like the gold to be hot enough so that when I add my alloy, it melts instantly and gets sucked in. Um, that way, oxygen uh, can't really get in there too much. The gold itself isn't affected by oxygen, uh, but the copper and the silver both can absorb it, and that can give you some bubbles and cracking and things like that. So, Do you have a preference for a kind of charcoal that you use? The harder the better just because it lasts longer, but otherwise charcoal is sort of just charcoal. But the um, harder the better. The, the more compressed and hard it is, <laughs> that's what charcoal. Um, you I fit was, right I was in here, you know that? just watching The Office just this weekend, yeah. as a matter of fact. Um, it'll just last longer that way. <laughs> All right. So we got some pure gold. That's it, ladies and gentlemen.